Loveline, coast to coast. Hey, everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That's Dr. Drew over there. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician and addiction medicine specialist. And strangely, all that enthusiasm tonight does not appear to be compensation. We are really getting you into talking about uh, bad 70s television, and man, you were yeah. lit. You were lighting up. I'm, uh, I'm in a good mood. Yeah. Um, Rob Zombie is uh, going to be our guest tonight. I'm very confident he'll be in here. Yeah. He uh, showed up a little early. Anderson sent him packing. and uh, As we'll, usual. He may be hanging out with Cisco at the Sky Bar for all uh, <laughs> we know. Yeah. Cisco came here. Anderson sent him away. Maybe an hour early. A year ago or something. Anderson sent him packing and he never returned. Is this one of your ladies from the 70s? No. No. All right. But that's good radio when you just point at stuff. Rob Zombie uh, came by here, got here early, and uh, ran out to get something to eat. And I would imagine that he will be uh, walking in here momentarily. So uh, we'll be looking forward to that. Uh, we'll talk about his CD. And he's on tour with Ozzy. And God willing, he didn't get in a car accident. All right. So, uh, Drew? Let's go to phones. We'll uh, go to the phones. I had something I wanted to say, but oh, I can't really? think Why? of it. About yeah. 70s television again? Nope. Christopher Titus is going to be in here from uh, Titus, and uh, Ubastank will be in here on Tuesday. That's the band with the uh, the name you can't forget. It's just you can't pronounce it. Suzanne? Hi. Hey, you're 18. What's up? Hi. Okay, I have this problem. I, I just want to know what you guys make of it. All right. Okay. I am, I'm only 18, and I like, like, 40 and 50 year old men and I want to know like if it has like I know you guys always talk about like did your father leave and my father did leave but how does that have anything to do with it you know it's just like a I don't know I don't get it have really? you been hold on have you been dating 40 and 50 year old guys no I'm just really really like I want to though it's like because I'm in high school still but as soon as I get out of high school I want to like start dating I don't want to date my age I just want to date like 40 and 50 year old guys well Please. hold on Ro Rob Zombie just came in so now you got to hang on okay <laughs> That's the way it works uh, here. Beauty uh, before age. Uh, Rob is uh, good to see you, Rob. Hello. It's been, uh, oh, I don't know. At least a year. A couple huh? years. I would a say year. years. Kind of hard maybe to tell. Two years. Hard because Rob's <laughs> been in here quite a, quite a few times, but been I, but uh, maybe, I, maybe I was drunk the last time I was here and I can't oh, remember. That's a good, good probability. Yeah. Ozzy Osbourne was in here a few weeks ago, and uh, I'm seeing here you're out on a tour with him, which must be uh, a good time. Yeah, it's good. It's funny. <laughs> yeah. Is it, is it a little <laughs> surreal? It's a little surreal because they're filming a TV show about their life. So they're constantly surrounded by cameras at they, all moments. They were here with cameras, remember? Yeah. That's and right. The yeah. camera crew lives in their house. and Right. They're doing... Uh, a friend of mine is working on this. Is it for MTV? I think so, yeah. It's, it's a, an MTV show. I think it's called The Osbournes. Right. I don't know, I don't know what it, the it, deal is, but... Well, what it is, is it's sort of like a sitcom. What? It's a, almost like a parody of a sitcom. Sort of like Ozzy and Harriet. But it would be the Osbournes. I mean, oh Ozzy and his wow. wife. Because I think somebody finally figured out that their life is like a sitcom at all moments. Like, they don't have to make anything up. So they're just going to kind of edit into storylines. They will. I think yeah. they will shoot a ton of footage and then create a storyline based on editing and the footage right. that they shot. So as opposed to writing it and doing it, they'll, they'll do it and it. then they'll write around it. With like uh, I guess like they would do on when uh, John Wayne does those beer commercials. <laughs> you know, they, basically, it's it's he'll dance with a Big Brother, Hoover, right? The TV show. <laughs> That's right. Fred Astaire will dance with a <laughs> with a Hoover. Exactly. And uh, oh, can you imagine those relatives that sold them out once they get to hell with Fred Astaire and John <laughs> Wayne? What so they're going to do? There's going to be a serious ass kicking. <laughs> First, they're going to want to taste of you know whatever Hoover and Coors paid, and then an ass kicking will ensue. Uh, Rob's uh, new CD is called The Sinister Urge, and it is uh, out, and uh, it's been out for a week. It is selling very well, and uh, Rob is, uh, like I said, on tour. I got a bunch of tour dates, but I would imagine just everything sold out, wouldn't it be? Pretty much, yeah. The, the first couple shows were a little weird, I think, because early on people were afraid to still go out and be in big arenas and buy tickets and do stuff, but right. now it's all good. And is uh, your your audience... 
I'm guessing your audience and Ozzy's audience aren't aren't too far apart. <laughs> yeah, it's the same. Are they? Yeah, it was, it's it's all the same audience. Actually, one night in Albuquerque, this guy, The Edge, a wrestler, came out on stage because we did some WWF tie-in. He's like, I don't know if these kids are going to know who I am. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, don't worry. believe me. <laughs> don't worry. They're like, they're like Ozzy, they're like Rob Zombie. He but... tried to go to the concession stand to get a hot dog and got mobbed. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's uh, that's the core demo. Pretty much. Uh, what's going on? Oh, uh, I was talking to your uh, guy about uh, House of a Thousand Corpses and the uh, whole uh, movie debacle. <clears throat> what's going on with that? Uh, still kind of moving on. Um, basically, now it's kind of it's kind of actually the whole thing has become so different in the sense that there was that moment when the movie kind of got dumped by Universal when. Uh, I don't know, the election was going on, everybody was campaigning against Hollywood, and now no one cares again, so everyone's back <laughs> saying they want the movie. Did, did they think it was, <laughs> was it too graphic? Or? Well, I, yeah, it was too gra everyone said it was too graphic, it was disgusting, and they were all worried about trying to, you know, market it to kids, and this, I don't know, it was very vague. I kind of got that standard answer that the general tone of the entire movie was... right wrong it, you, you know it's uh, i was i was thinking about this Couldn't earlier tonight to the tone i i hollywood is a, a town where whatever answer you get is not whatever the answer is mm. it's just whatever they need it to be right yeah. like um I, I don't think i told you this drew but when me and uh my partner uh jimmy from the man show which is on comedy central right now by the way <laughs> we're in one of your man show uh, uh trampoline girls is oh. in the movie oh really yeah uh, which one <laughs> I can't remember her name right now. Trampoline or or, or, or the trampoline? Oh, you the... mean one of the juggies? Oh, she's, yeah, she's in there somewhere. I think she, she's been on a trampoline before, hasn't she? No, oh, they've oh, all been yeah. on the trampoline. Yeah. She's got like curly red hair or something. Yeah. They, oh, uh, Paula. The yeah, uh, that, casting. Yeah, yes. Right. Yes. Well, they've all been on the casting trampoline, <laughs> that's for sure. But we were, anyway, we're in New York. And <laughs> as you know, Conan doesn't like me. I've been kind of asked not to come back on Conan. What happened? I, I just... Yeah, brought up some stuff that maybe they didn't want me to bring up. Or what did you bring up? I, I don't. I don't remember. They weren't was it the time when I was on with you. Or no, you? they weren't happy with my last appearance. Oof. But here's the point: <laughs> they're score well. they're in New York, and we're in the in New York doing this Hugh Hefner roast, and they're desperate for guests because no one will fly into New York because this is a month ago, and this is right after the tragedy, and they can't find any guests. No one will fly in for that roast. No, they the roast people flew in, but Conan is uh, you know, Conan Letterman. New York shows are having difficulty oh, getting right, yeah. getting guests. I it. So Conan calls and they want Jimmy, but they don't want me. And they say we'll just have Jimmy on the show, but uh, we don't need Adam on the show. And they told my people, well, the only reason we don't want Adam is because we don't do pairs, <laughs> we don't do teams, <laughs> except, and, except and, the last and, two and, times and, you've been right. on. And I said. <laughs> Well, that would be a great excuse, except for I have done the show with Dr. Drew before. <laughs> so, see, that would be a beautiful excuse for a guy who didn't do your show with his other partner. That's right. And they should have looked into that. But it's just an example of how whatever it is they tell you is not whatever not it is. Truth. And that's just television. I imagine the movie industry oh. is even worse. <laughs> I could only I could only. Well, that was imagine. kind of funny because after... Uh, the whole thing happened with me the next day on the cover of the Hollywood Reporter was the I forget it was like head of production of the guy who spearheaded the movie lost his job the next day mm -hmm. wow. some whole other story oh, yeah. like oh he's going off to start <laughs> his own company but I was like you know I'm sure it was yada like, yada yada yeah when you're <laughs> out of here and take him with you all right, so that'll uh, but the movie's finished yeah the movie's edited, done so done. that so wow I take it as a triumph just there no it'll probably be out in the summertime through somebody else did but, did you direct it yeah. And did you uh, write it? Yeah. And but you weren't in it. No, I'm not in it. Why didn't you uh, put yourself in it? Because I'm not an actor. Well, <laughs> you're a performer, you, were, you, were, you weren't a director sure. either before this. Yeah, but right? I made a, you know, but that I feel like I understand, and I've made a lot of directed a lot of videos, and that's what I've always wanted to do. But I have no desire to be an actor, so I don't want to like look like really? a really jump. Well, that's interesting, because uh, like I said, you're a good performer, and in, in a way, you know. I think but I think all musicians off. have a pretty good track record with not being able to act. Yeah. yeah. What about on any Snoop? Level. But still succeeding. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but still succeeding well. <laughs> right. Yeah. All right. Suzanne. So Suzanne was attracted to older guys. And oh, she, that's and her right. Her dad took off, and she didn't understand how they. She's eighteen. Out. You you fantasize about forty and fifty year old guys. Yeah, like one of my one of my teachers and one of my bosses at work. Here, here's what you got to understand: is that your intellectual conscious mind is different than the emotional context. 
in which you have these attractions, okay? Okay. That, that very often when things happen to us that are painful, it gets converted into a sort of arousal patterns and attraction later on. And so oh. the things that it, and it, people th try to rationalize it and think, well, you're trying to solve the trauma of the past. It's more than that. It's this biology gets etched in, and then your mature self gets built on top of that. You All understand? Right. So you need, to, you need to learn to read your attractions and understand they may not be the healthiest thing in the world, and there may be no nourish, more nourishing kinds of relationships you can establish with your peers. Well, you, you, you don't think... Yeah. You don't think I should act on it, do you? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Drew's saying yeah. definitely. <laughs> <laughs> he, Drew, uh, let, let me read between the lines. He's saying anal. <laughs> didn't you yeah. hear that? You didn't get that? That's no, Rob that's and I got that. It was clear as day. <laughs> <laughs> what What about uh, guys your own? Let's say like a 21 year old guy. Would you be attracted to him? See, I'm sleeping with a 20 year old guy. Oh, and that's nice. I call. See, I call him daddy, and you think that's kind of weird. Yeah. So I don't know. He's okay. He's okay. But I don't know what it is about these older guys. I, I Okay, but you, your boyfriend is 21. No, he's just some guy I'm sleeping with. All right. Do you, do you think you could have a boyfriend who was 20, 21? Well, I don't know, because I don't know if I want a boyfriend again, because I cheated on my last one with his best friend, so I don't know if I can... This is, more of that, this is more of the bigger syndrome here, uh, Suzanne, which is you can't tolerate intimacy. And well, if somebody actually is available to you, you're going to sabotage that and put a nail in that coffin. And if some guy is really unavailable, you're going to be interested and interested and interested until he actually is available and you'll sabotage it. All right, but she's 18. Just don't get pregnant. And I, li I like the daddy thing personally, but it always ends up taking a weird turn at a certain point when it goes from, oh, you know, goes from big daddy to daddy, no, and then a lot of crying. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's a whole yeah. context to the yeah. daddy. Big Daddy, Sugar Daddy, all that's all that's good. It's just the weird daddy. <laughs> Jen? Yeah. Oh, no, Daddy, please! <laughs> you're, uh, you're 18? Yeah. What's up? Okay. Um, I've been dating this guy on and off for about two years. And this past relationship we've been in, it's, we've been together for about six months now. And um, we're having sex. But the problem is he's... I don't know. He's not like... I've had sex with other people before, and I've had orgasms before, but with him, he can... I think the longest we've ever went was probably seven minutes. He's... He tends to climax really fast, and I can't... It's it's really hard for me to have an, have an orgasm. And I don't know how... Like, he knows that, it, that I'm bothered by it, and I've talked to him, but I don't know how to, like... I, I, he doesn't, like, take me... I don't know. I don't... It's hard to explain, but... You, you take it personally a little bit, like he's not like yeah, he's doing he, it intentionally? He kind of gets, gets upset about it, like, you know, well, I'm sorry I can't fulfill your needs, you know, but I don't know, like, how to have a conversation and talk with him about it without... Without him getting, getting upset. Def him getting defensive about it. Yeah. Do you normally bring it up right after it's happened? Um, most of the time, yeah, or we'll, we'll be talking, okay. you know, we'll just be talking about it or something, because I make jokes about it. Try to, to try to, like, hit him out, you know, because I don't know how to approach him. Let me it. tell you, having conversation, even about things guys want to talk about after orgasm is difficult for guys and oftentimes food, upsetting. Food, food's okay. You know about food. <laughs> if he's got a favorite team, you might be able to discuss that. But anything above that is, is oftentimes painful and upsetting to a man. And talking about his dysfunction after the orgasm, Top I guess it just... Yeah, there couldn't be anything higher up on the list of things guys really don't want to talk about. So you should probably have this before it, uh, the conversation before he screws up sexually. But does he <laughs> does he give you oral sex? Um, that's been I'm kind of nervous. We haven't done that yet. You're He's nervous? asked me on many occasions to do it to him, and I'm I've never done it before. <laughs> well, and then we're not talking about you doing it to him. We're talking about him doing it to you. Oh, I'm nervous either way for him to do it to me. Why? Or for me to do Why it. Are you nervous? Know. It's, I've never had it done to me before. All right, well, that's sort of a nice place to <laughs> begin work, and if you're worrying about orgasmic function. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that's the place to start. You, yeah, that, you may, that'll you give may you your not, orgasm. Yeah, you may not be as concerned about his qu quickness. In fact, you may be anxious in him being quicker. I, I've said it many times. You are on the clock when you start the oral sex. That That's when the sex begins. Really? I mean, you can punch in. So if you you do oral for like 15, 18 minutes, then you have six, seven minutes worth of sex. That's a nice 21, 22-minute session. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's just me. That's that's the way I approach it. You let him, what, what are you so uptight for? You guys are intimate. I don't know. It's I, I guess I'm just scared because I've never had it done before. And, I mean, and what I, about his constant uh, pleas to go down on him, ignored by you? 
I kind of just blow it off. We have this deal after we've been together for a certain amount of time, then I said I would do it. But <laughs> <laughs> it's just kind of like to tease him. When that time comes, I'm going to be like, no, you know, but. Oh, <laughs> oh, he'll, he'll, oh Jim, you can't do that. <laughs> Listen, he's, he's liable to break a table uh, leg off and yeah. just go upside your head with it. Yeah, or something. you can't and, do that. And no court in the land would convict him either. I'm thinking about doing it because I, I'm. I'm really not. It's when we have sex. It's kind of like he's getting the pleasure, and then that's it, you know. And I feel like hello, you know. And I almost, I almost had an orgasm. I've never had an orgasm with him before. This is a no one's listening night. <laughs> yeah, These people just are not listening to us. This is a bad <laughs> question. But you, we told her, gave her a way to deal with it. and Now she's back to the perseverating on what she. So are, you are not. Have you given other guys BJ's? No. I've never done it before. That's why I'm kind of nervous to do it to him. But yet you've had orgasms with other guys through intercourse. Yeah. Wow. Just not this guy. I'll tell you, you're really going to love this oral sex. <laughs> if you can have an orgasm through the intercourse, you're going to get hooked on It's going to be like heroin for you. <laughs> You're gonna really he just enjoy goes this. Too fast. I, I mean, like I, I know, I know. But he's, know? he's just how old is he? He's twenty. All right. Well, you see, young guys. He's nervous or something. He doesn't have a lot of experience. <laughs> and Jen, yeah. Jen, the the joking business, mm -hmm. bad angle. Because <laughs> because you, you gotta be you gotta sit down, be direct, and, and you know do it in a caring way, but make it very clear, very direct. Don't joke about it because you joke about stuff like that. He thinks you're kidding. And let me explain something to the ladies. This is not a conscious decision we make through orgasm oftentimes. It's not like spitting on somebody. Do you know what I mean? I think a lot of women <laughs> or, or, feel or like, like we... like peeing. Like peeing. Okay, I'm gonna, here we go. I'm gonna <laughs> well, pee they now. get angry. It's like, come on. Hold it. Why'd you do that? We were having a good time. And they don't say anything because it's weird, but the anger builds up, and now you get no blowjob. <laughs> Here's the thing. I'm sure this guy would pe would clean out his bank account and max his Visa card <laughs> to be able to add 10 minutes to one of his sessions. But he is incapable of doing that. It's not his biology. This is like this is like being angry at, at some kid for having Down syndrome. Right. That's right. Well, that's and, okay, isn't it? Yeah. If it's your own kid and you got to clean up <laughs> yeah. after him, I think it's perfectly healthy. But not if it's the neighbor kid. Right. You see what I'm saying? His mom yeah. drank too much while she was pregnant, and something went awry. Yeah. So talk to the guy. Don't don't be angry but about you're it. Scared. And this whole like, I want I want to know when <laughs> she was going to give up the BJ. How long until he got the BJ? What was that? How long? What What was the date for the uh, christening of the penis? <laughs> <laughs> it was supposed to be nine months. And that nine will be when? Nine months. <laughs> um, well, you know, you know what I would hear? Here's right here. Say nine months. Here's right nine here. months. A thousand years. <laughs> <laughs> that would be in my head. I'd, I would kill myself. I think you just hear infinity. <laughs> a thousand years. Nine Never. months. Jesus Christ, that's a whole school year. Well, it's already been six months, and it kind of like, the reason we started the whole thing in the first place is because we had, a, we had this bet, and I told him, well, I had like I don't know I kind of I was like well if you do this then if if I win then I'll give you a blowjob and he's like okay well I ended up winning and I'm like okay well um, the time came and I was just like I don't want to do that you know I'm I'm not ready yet whatever so then I kept putting it off and I'm like okay you know what after we're together for nine months then I'll do it to you and then he kind of freaked out and he was like nine months that's you know that's forever. And I, I you honestly hear it a thousand years too. Well, but what is up with you that you've had your fair share of intercourse, but are not ready for the BJ? I, it started out. I just thought it was disgusting, right? And I kind of carried it on, and now I just don't even have the desire to do All it. All right, you got any, anything weird? Anyone uh, put in your mouth while you're asleep or something <laughs> at camp or do something weird like what happened to Drew? No, no, I'm normal. Everything's fine. Are you, are you sorry, man? Are you, you know, we're trying I, to help. I told you not to tell anybody. <laughs> we're about trying that. to help. But uh, is there uh, you have feelings of aggression at all? Do you feel like you might? And is something? You know what I mean? Do you, do you bite something? Yeah. No. All right. Okay. All right. Well, you, Nine months. Yeah. That's how long this call's been that, going on that, for? Yes. That yes. Is, yes. <laughs> Rob, <laughs> Rob, Rob, Rob is right. Rob. Good instinct. In celebrity BJ time, that is that is w <clears throat> what? There's no measurable amount for that nine months. I mean. Rob, you couldn't go. You couldn't go. Nine, nine months? months. One yeah. month equals one year. No, I'd say more. More? Like, ten a, years? A guy, for a guy in a band? Oh, yeah. Ten years. Easily. More, way more than dog years, whatever that is. Seven. Matt? Hey, what's up? You're uh, 14. What's up? 
Yeah, um, I've only got one testicle, and I'm not sure what the girls would think about it. What happened to the uh, other one? Um, when I was a kid, it was undescended, I think my mom said. Mm-hmm. Did they go in there and take out? Take they it tried out? To push, yeah, they tried to push it down, but, right. and they couldn't, so they ended up having to take it out. All right. Well, hey. I think most most women would consider this uh, triumph. Getting rid of half of that ugly sack and yeah, yeah. It looks, th this is this is like a uh, Quasimodo getting a zit, right? You, you know what I mean? It's like it's such a mess. Your sack's such a disgusting mess to women anyway. They don't care what the hell. It couldn't be any worse. No, it's hip. <laughs> it's a hip thing now. I have one that Sex in the City episode. Yeah, right. It's all hip to the scene. You, you could put uh, <laughs> Frankenstein bolts on your sack, and it still wouldn't look any That's worse. That's what people do. Hold on, Rob. Like that right. might be a good... <laughs> Titanium <laughs> ball. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah. Hey, hey Matt. Yeah. Uh, here's would be my idea, though. Once they uh, went ahead and took it out, how about putting it back in where it belongs? <laughs> What's so wrong about that? You got to drop kick it into the garbage can? And they take know, the man. they take the testy out. Can't they put it into the sack? No, if they, it's were, they, they were trying to pull it down. It would, they couldn't get it. So they just remove it. If they don't remove, remove it, 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 it becomes I, cancerous. I know they they take it out. No, no, they they have they have to. What do they do? The the, the, the testy's up in the abdomen, yeah, right? And it has its own blood supply and nerve supply. And take it stuff. out and put it in where it belongs. It doesn't come. You have to pull it down in with all that attached. Couldn't to it. get it. Well, and then it you go. pull it out. Then you go up and you fish the the. You can't do it. The cord down and yet it wasn't there. I could do it. I could do it. <sighs> Just gave right. up too quick. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying. Let me tell you, if that was it, I, it, if that was the doctor sack he was working on, you <laughs> got well, cure. he would have figured out how to get that thing down there. Would have taken him down to uh, the astronaut training center and put him on one of those uh, centrifuge spinning machines until it pulled out of him. Wait a minute, Drew. Plan there. All right, all right, Matt. You're fine. You can right. do fine. You can do fine with one nut, and uh, it's something to talk about. And uh, chicks are fine. They won't even right. know it. I don't just, think they'll know it. No, just tell them you're Swedish. Right. Yeah. Swedish guys only have all one right. nut. Adam, your God. Thanks, sir, man. And I want to say hi to my friend. Mm. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 impossible. <laughs> Rob Zombie's our guest tonight. We will uh, take ourselves a little break. We'll come back. We'll hear something off his new CD and uh, all that after this. Hey, everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew over there. Rob Zombie's our guest. The Sinister Urge is the name of the CD. Out in uh, record stores all over the United States and beyond. As, it came out last week? As we speak, yes. Yeah, and, some uh, guy on the parking lot had it on vinyl, and he goes, I can't what? find it on CD. What? And he was dead serious. No. He, he wasn't even kidding. I thought around. he was joking, but he wasn't. Like, do, do, they, <laughs> do they, obviously they do a certain amount, do they do a certain amount of vinyl for every CD that comes out now, or did you request it, or how They does always that do go? a certain amount, because I think there's a certain, but it's like, you know, they'll make 3 million CDs and 15,000 vinyls or right. something. Right, and have a trou trouble selling them. R really, there's not yeah. enough. There's no know, stores that sell them. I mean, it's like collector stores. But, you know. Well, if you if you think about it too, just uh, remember uh, when you'd move back in the day and you'd pick up a stack of let's say twenty vinyl elms and you busted your ass or you kept them in a crate in a milk crate like that de mobile dj <laughs> thing that had like 30 of them in a milk crate and you lift that thing and you bust a gut i mean just imagine moving that stuff all over the country and stocking every shelf and oh god all right so anyway uh you can find it in vinyl is there is there a picture on it is it red is it does it got your head on it is now it, it's pretty normal just a uh, regular old vinyl geez. just vinyl in itself is now you know you make fun of me for for, for so sort of not knowing went on from, like from 1982 to 1990 basically right. I, I had not been in a record store for a decade and when i walked in i was like oh my god it's only cds what, what is this when did, when, did, when did it discs. convert over oh. <laughs> i swear to god I, I went oh my god when did this happen yeah, well, is that just weird? Fifteen years, yeah, yeah, that is weird, Drew. <laughs> Cameron, yep, you're twenty. Yep. What's up? Not much. What's going on, guys? Just hanging. All right. Uh, first, Adam, Doctor Drew, you guys are awesome. But I wanted to call in and uh, ask Rob Zombie a question. Um, oh, okay. I've been a fan of you for like ten years, and I'm so excited about hearing about this movie. And uh, I read an article a while ago that said when you originally were working on it or had finished it, it was NC-17, and the studio said you couldn't put out an NC-17 movie. Is that true? 
Yeah, that's true. We sent it to the MPAA and it got an NC-17, which was shocking to me at that point because it seemed like a soft R. Because I had been, you know, I don't know. I don't know what the hell goes on at the ratings board. I think if you don't have any big stars in it, they, they're harsher. But Universal won't release NC-17 movies. Uh, it's not under so their corporate leasing strategy, as they told me. Interesting. And it, it, it's also interesting about the big star thing, because I could see not only you kiss an ass, but, I mean, not you, I mean, but of the big star. But when you see a movie, like a horror movie, with a big star in it, it's safer. Well, that's what, that was part of the argument, too, because they... They simultaneously released Hannibal at right. the same time, and you know it's got all the brain eating and stuff. And they said, "Well, when you see Anthony Hopkins eat a brain, it's not as it's disturbing. not as scary as if you see like." Well, you know Anthony Hopkins. You saw him on Good Morning. Yeah, and he'll be on Letterman making fun on, of it the next night or something. Right. So he's still alive. So you're not freaked out when he gets it in the movie. Yeah, but when you get crazy unknown people, they look at it and go like. Is right. that guy actually an actor or just yeah. some nut that's in the movie? Well, they could have killed a couple of those extras. <laughs> no one would have cared. All right, uh, what else, Cameron? So, uh, to follow up on that, did you cut it down to an R rating, or are you going to try and release the NC-17? Or I'm not really sure. I would like to release the NC-17 because it's the better movie, and that's right. what everyone now expects. If I cut it to an R, they'll, everyone will see it and go like, what was the big deal about that? Well, because an R, you know, I mean, R rated movie now is pretty mild. T to me too, though, if you're going to see a horror movie, I mean, if you're going, Rob, you you want it to be as hairy as it can yeah, be, I mean, right? My thoughts was, I mean, I wanted it to seem like a '70s movie because '70s horror movies always seemed like basically in the same league as porno back then. Yeah, they were just dark and disgusting and raunchy, and you left the movie feeling like. Why did I just enjoy that? What's wrong with me? That, that seemed like a good time watching I Spit on Your Grave. Why did I come? Yeah, like what was so... Why am I so happy and I want to see that again? Whereas now it's like, you know... Yeah, no, I... You know, nothing... You never feel like wrong about yourself leaving a horror movie. And, and nothing... Other than the fact that you wasted two hours of your life. Nothing... Uh, and you know what's good? Everything's spectacular now. But to me, in, a, in horror movies, there's nothing worse than the sort of plausible stuff they used to do in the 70s like you remember the evil dead mm -hmm. there's one scene where the arm comes up from underneath the cellar door the guy is standing there and the guy takes like a number two pencil this a demon and just jams the number two <laughs> pencil right into the guy's achilles heel mm. and I, I walked out of theater limping you know <laughs> and i was like this this it took nothing more than a foot and a number two pencil. I mean, no no huge pyrotechnics or, or creative you know industrial light magic stuff. No, I but think man, it was effective. Yeah, I mean, I think the you know a big uh, kind of like computer generated demons not scary, but like a crazy guy with a dirty pillowcase over his face is like right. terrifying because you're like you can picture that and you'll be lying in bed at night thinking that guy with the pillowcase over his head standing in your window. Right, but and, you and you'll see other pillowcases. Yeah, I mean, there's, it's just there's, something there's you can relate to, but like you see these other movies and it's so over the top that you can't really relate, so right. it's not scary. It, it becomes surreal or just sort of uh, uh, out of the ordinary or extravagant or the other and you don't buy it. Yeah, like the other funny thing is say The Exorcist is completely humorless and everyone's always like, oh, that's the scariest movie ever made. But then they have this other weird Hollywood formula where they think, it should always be funny too. Mm. Horror yeah. and comedy go together when yeah. When they do, and it always sucks when they go together. It's always, right. you know. But <laughs> well, what are your, what are your, some of your favorites? I mean, I like all the really early Universal thirty stuff, like Frankenstein, Dracula, mm -hmm. and the really good stuff. But then in the seventies, you know, the wave of kind of like Texas Chainsaw Massacre and that type of stuff. Well, what are there any? Most is there any exploit of seventies stuff? Like suspense stuff. Um, like I like The Shining. Yeah, I'm trying to think of other ones that were a little more psychological and a little, you know, slow build, I guess you might say. I mean, I think even movies like Seven, you know, Seven was... Yeah, that was really I mean, good. I guess it's more like a crime movie, but, you know, as far as for a scary movie in the last 20 years, really, right. I think. You know what I uh, thought was good, too? Uh, the first, uh, The Manhunter, which was uh, the before the sort of prequel to Silence yeah, of the Lambs. I, I didn't yeah. see that. I read it. Did you see that? No, I read the book, but I didn't see it. You, you should see it. It's, it's weird, yeah. and the uh, Hannibal Lecter was... Uh, was real good. It wasn't uh, Anthony Hopkins. It was a Hopkins. TV movie, wasn't it? No. I thought it, it was a TV movie. It was movie a Michael first. Mann movie. Hmm. And it was it was weird. It, it was <laughs> a good it was a good movie. I, I recommend it to uh, anyone who likes a likes a thrill. Rachel? Yes. You're 17? Yes, I am. What's up? All right. Uh, my boyfriend and I lost our virginity to each other over the summer. And I had thought that I broke my hymen before we had sex. And when we were having sex, I wasn't in any pain. So I thought, you know, that was true. Then the second time we had sex, I was dying of pain, and I wasn't sure why. 
And I went to the gynecologist about two weeks later because I thought I had a yeast infection and I was in pain then as well. And he told me that I actually still had my hymen. Mm -hmm. And I was really surprised and I had sex twice already. Um, Boyfriend uh, must be uh, very proud. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't sure exactly Hung what was like going a on. pigeon. <laughs> and what, what, yeah, that, that's, that's, that, that'll send a guy into therapy. Yeah. Bang this chick three times, Hyman, like, no. <laughs> and he's he not a scratch. small guy. <laughs> yeah, that, that, a scratch that's, on that dent it. Still got that new Hyman smell. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just surprised because he's not a small guy. Wow. Um, and I was thinking that maybe because I use, I don't know, I used to horseback ride a lot and mm. I used big tampons. So my friends told me maybe I stretched it out or maybe it's just high up or something. No, I think what they're just seeing is remnants, that it may be real fibrous and uh, be having some difficulty coming apart there. And, okay. uh, and And it's, you know, coming, it's slowly working its way out. And okay. One of the times it hurt. Is there any way that I could, you know, check to see if it's gone or not? Or do I just, no, just have to why, hope? <laughs> why? I mean, you're concerned about it hurting next time? Yeah, okay. exactly. You send uh, a you canary can. up there or something? <laughs> Is there any, any animal yeah. that can find uh, just, just to make sure you've got somebody who's <coughs> compassionate if you really are having discomfort that he doesn't get carried away. Okay. All right. That's all. It'll, it will it'll work itself out. I'm pretty all sure. Right. All right. All right. Thank hey, you. Good times. Bye. Bye-bye. Well, there's a woman who... Hey, I like a woman who can treat her vagina like she's talking about a car park. <laughs> it's all that the, horseback riding. It really sounds kind of like shoes. Yeah. The shoe didn't quite fit. I got these, out. and uh, the guy <laughs> said there were 11, but I put them on. I, I should have put them on in the store, but I waited till I got home, right. and one was a little tight, so I, I tried back. stretching it with one of those uh, wooden things that looks like a foot that yeah, I used I, to be I, so... Yeah, I leave it in every night, put the yeah. shoe, <laughs> shoe uh, horn the, When I was... Uh, I don't know if those things are still around, but when I was like... Uh, Five, getting hold of one of those wooden shoe spring loaded shoe stretcher <laughs> things that looks sort of like a foot was yeah. very fascinating yeah, to me. Puppet foot. Yeah. That and uh, <laughs> the, uh, remember the shoe, the extendo shoe horn? Oh, yeah. With, with, the, with the horse's head on the horse's top. Horse's head on oh, the yeah. top. And, like the, uh, and then they had, like, the shoe buffer. I, I don't oh, think yeah, we're spending the, enough time on shoes <laughs> as a society. All the fine hotels. Have them. <laughs> there was a day when dudes had a lot of shoe-related <laughs> stuff that we don't have anymore. And we got to get back into that. The black and the red. Black <laughs> on one side, red on the other, that extended knob. The the whole, button on the top. Basically, the whole thing was, you have to put shoes on, but let's not have you bend over. <laughs> You, you, so you get a five foot long shoehorn with a horse's head on it, and you just uh, that buffer work. it. You needn't bend over to, <laughs> to touch. <laughs> Got to buff it up. <laughs> All right. Well, let's take a break. Should we do that? All right. Listen to a song. Okay. Oh, we have, oh, we we're supposed to listen to a song. <laughs> we got time we? for that. Let's do it. Yeah. We do. All yeah. right. You yeah, okay? Oh, look at Anderson over there. Just uh, fetching. Are you all right, Anderson? Fetching. <laughs> well, he had. He, had a, he looked like a Jewish grandmother's hand was on his head. And he's like, "Oi, with the song, no." No. We can hear a song, right? Yeah. All right, we got time. This is uh, this is from uh, Rob Zombie. It's off of uh, the Sinister Urge, and this one is called "Feel So Numb." Rob Zombie, uh, everybody, off the Sinister Urge. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back with uh, you and Drew and Rob and me Wild. after this. Right. And now they added a cat to it. <coughs> you know, they got, like, the, the maid and, the, I don't know. But they're little, little dogs, though, right? Yeah, yeah. all tiny dogs, yeah. and they're all crazy, and Ozzy seems to hate all of them. And I'll tell you, I've been abducted by aliens and just let down again. <laughs> See, sort, of, sort of like that. Yeah. That, that to <laughs> me, is a weird, like, to me, if I made a ton of money, would buy some solitude. Which is, you know, you get a big gate, and then you put, you know, you, you take the tin foil off the windows and get some nice blackout drapes, and then you just sit home and masturbate and watch old movies. You would oh, have. No, I, 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 I really don't. I'm, I'm, re I'm really, I'm really, uh, what did you, what did you say? I really, a hermit. Uh, <laughs> he's a hermit, but he doesn't. He wouldn't have the actual sensory deprivation chamber that you would go for. I, I would make a sensory deprivation yeah. chamber, and I would, I would sleep in one of those salt solution <laughs> well, tanks. You know, it's where you you know when we were talking about you know having a screening room that doesn't work right when i was over there he was screaming about the same thing because he couldn't figure out how to use a stereo because everything's on a giant universal remote yes so at some point he walked out and sat in the car <laughs> to listen to the because <laughs> wow. he wanted to listen to this paul mccartney record so bad it's just so funny because all their window shades everything's you know everything's hooked up it's to like, like the Jetsons, universal yeah, but no one can figure out how to use it right yeah the, the, these, except the kids these universal remotes are a a scourge a, a plague on modern society Sam. they they what what it is is instead of four remotes you know how to work we got one big one you can't work and it also doesn't have 
the big one doesn't have all the functions of the individual ones. Right. So you can't figure out so the, the just, pause or the slow motion or any of that. It's $2,000 for, <laughs> for a remote. So. <laughs> That's exactly what I have. True. Do you have a big universal remote no, that you no, can't I'm work? Not, I'm not a big celebrity like you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, the guys hook it up are like, this is going to change your life. Yeah. But, but the rest but they of the don't sentences, tell you how. That's yeah, the problem. in the worst way imaginable, you'll never watch TV again, yeah, is what they should say. my coffee. Drew, what, Drew pulled a, what, a roach? Oh, bug. Yeah. Oh, that's good nice. Times. Good times. Ah, that's <laughs> yeah. Probably just hatching and uh, their uh, offspring is making its way to your brain as we uh, speak. Uh, Ryan? Yeah. You're 16? Yeah. Um, uh, okay. I'm really nervous. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. We're with you. All right. Um, Rob, you like you know, you were the greatest and all that. Thank you. And uh, Adam, you're you're really cool too. Thanks. And you can't forget Drew. And Drew. And why, the way to deal with this <sighs> when you're nervous is get right to that question. <laughs> all right. Um, you know that wrestler Edge. Yeah. Yeah. He's got your music. I just want to know: Did like did WWF come to you and ask you if they can use your song, or you know? How did he get that as his theme song? Um, I actually wasn't sure until I talked to him, and he actually requested it. Well, he just, rec you know, they, he needed a theme song, and he asked the WWF if there was any Rob Zombie songs. And uh, it just so happened that he asked that right at the moment that I had a new record, and it just was an accident. Do you, do you get a piece, like, from ASCAP or something, like, when they play it, when he enters the arena uh, and that kind of maybe, stuff? Maybe, but months, it's, months. I'm sure it's like, you know... Twelve cents. A twelfth of a cent. Yeah. Right. Per each match, yeah, though, that so. adds up. <laughs> After uh, 4,000 yeah, matches, like it gets $5. dollars buck a year on that. Right. But, uh, yeah, no, it was just... It's kind of flattering, though, right? That was cool, because I figured it was just... When he came out to the show and I met him, I figured, you know, they had just stuck him with the song and he didn't, wouldn't give a crap and it would be really embarrassing, but he was right, like, but into he, it. Right, but he picked it out. Yeah, so it was good. I wonder if they have a library to uh, choose from, the WWF. Do you know, like, certain songs they've cleared or certain songs you can use? Like, you, you can't use Happy Birthday... Because that costs no, too much. No, I bet they clear it as they impulse it. Yeah, but if you want to do a Beatles song, because I've run into this with the Man Show, it's too expensive. Right. Yeah, that's you, true. You, you can't go out there to uh, Hard Day's Night or uh, Norwegian Wood. And thus, you don't hear them doing that. <laughs> I guess there's a lot of guys wanting to do that's that. That's why Stone Cold Steve Austin is that's right. not using Hard Day's Night. Hey, Ryan? Yeah. You, you, uh, you satisfied? Yeah. All right, buddy. All right. Thanks, Thanks for calling. Okay. Take care. Uh, I thought he was, was setting us up for something really bad. Yeah. Christina? <laughs> yeah, that's in the 11 o'clock hour. Christina, you're 16. What's up? Hey. Hey. Um, First time caller, long time listener. You guys are awesome. Great. I was calling in response to the girl that called um, a little bit ago about the nine months no blowjob thing. Yeah. Um, it's not as bad as it seems, really. For but, for you, it's not. For the penis, it's hell. On the other hand, it's, it's a certain diabolical quality to it. I mean, it's, women not employ that kind of technique more often. Well, you guys, this is, this should prove to you guys you are in control. The guy's like behaving himself beautifully for nine months. Well, and another thing too, if I wanted out at the seven month mark, I would stay in. The, two more months. I'd be like, geez, I got seven Stick months into this blowjob. <laughs> I'm going to gut it out for another two months. And maybe something really nice will happen in that two month period. Yeah, like maybe. a BJ. I think you really have a relationship. Oh, I see. Right yeah, right. Out yeah. of that. BJ. <laughs> right. Why are you doing this, Christina? Well, I was I was really really scared, and I totally grossed me out. For well, but let's talk about what what is it that's fearful of fright? You know, that makes you fearful of this thing. Ah, uh, it's just the fact of having a penis in your mouth. I is guess. Is there a fantasy attached to that? That's some sharp bad? edges. Yeah, that's going <laughs> to pierce you or something, or what? I don't know. It's just disgusting when you think about it's it. It's disgusting. But... So it's not fearfulness. Is you're you're just afraid you're going to get totally grossed out. Yeah, but then mm. it has to. You have to think about it the other way too. About him on you? Yeah. Yeah, that's worse. <laughs> I, 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 I really do. I, I really think just, you know, on the cosmic order, uh, I mean, if, if I was like a, um, you know, from, from outer space, I'd be blowing guys rather than going down <laughs> on chicks. If it had no, no abstract meaning to If it. I had, like, no genitalia yeah. and, and no sexual proclivity and I just came from Mars, I'd probably be, I'd get in the line for the BJs. Yeah, yeah. Little yeah. gay E.T. <laughs> right. Ooh. There's a good sequel. I don't know. Christina? Yeah? Uh, so are you doing this? To your, are you scared of the orgasm part of it, or is it just the, the penis that's bad? Uh, I've only done it once, and I waited four months with this guy to do it. Right. 
I finally did it, and it actually wasn't really as bad as I thought it was going to be. There you go. Yeah. Okay. So uh, you it, it didn't bite you. <laughs> Fantastic. Are you still with this? You still with this guy? Uh, unfortunately, no. Oh, he broke up with you? Yeah. Yeah, he didn't do a good enough job. No! <laughs> All right, so uh, sweet dreams. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right, Christina, thanks. Bye-bye. Take care of yourself. We are uh, going to take ourselves a little top of the hour break. Rob Zombie's our guest tonight. We'll hear something else off the new CD, The Sinister Urge, after this. Everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Drew. Phone number one eight hundred L O V E one nine one. Rob Zombie's our guest tonight. The Sinister Urge is the name of the CD out in stores and uh, on these new things. Drew, they're uh, called uh, <laughs> compact discs. They're even I, smaller. I was known as CD. Listen, I remember walking. <laughs> what? What is this? Yeah. Oh my God, this happened overnight. Yeah, they, <laughs> <laughs> it was ten, 10 years I've been in an You're album. telling me you don't have to wind the Victrol anymore? <laughs> you, can, you plug them in? What it's is this? I, I, does this Adam, disc play I, I really <laughs> never really read it, but you have no idea how freaked out I was. Oh my God. They, Drew, you know, you know what your whole life is? You know those movies when guys go into a coma? Yeah. And then they, they wake amnesia? up 20 yeah. years yeah. later? Oh, Awakening. Yes. They, they, they see life. a soft swirl yogurt machine <laughs> and they freak out. No, this is That's you every day, right? It's about time. That's my life. Remember that? Yeah, well, the, the guys from the astronauts go back and pick up a couple of uh, huh? cavemen in the, in the bodies of Imogene Coca. And <laughs> what, what year was that? Oh, Sixty-seven. Oh, Jesus, like true. Our our listeners were not born for another huh? thirty-five years. Okay, so uh, where are we? How's uh, how's your brother doing? Uh, Power Man Five Thousand and everything. Good. It's He's just working on a new record. Do you guys uh, <laughs> you guys are performing together? Just once at uh, some K Rock. Uh, K-Rock Christmas deal. Oh, the acoustic yeah, uh, the Christmas. Time we ever did. Are you coming out this year? Uh, we're well, we're kind of all gonna well supposedly be on the road at the same time, so we'll be all the way on the other side of the country. So, oh yeah, Ozzy broke his leg. Ozzie. Hairline yeah. fractures, actually. Really? Yeah. yeah. That's what why. happened? <laughs> wow. I don't know. He hurt himself the first night of the tour. That's why I'm home. I'm oh. supposed to be in like uh, oh, Kansas yeah. right now or something. Right. And doing uh, some some stunt like trying to walk or. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what happened. He never told me, he would, but it's you are the weakest thing. Goodbye. <laughs> seems like uh, I don't. I don't know how old is he in his early fifties. Fifty three. He seems uh, pretty pretty robust, pretty pretty strong. I mean, in some ways. Yeah. All right, Drew. Well, that was a shot, Jared. Yeah. In some ways, Jared. You're eighteen. Yeah. Is this Rob? Yeah, that's Rob. Yes. Dude, you're like my hero. Period. I just wanted to let you know that, and I had a question about. Uh, uh, White Zombie? Uh-huh. And your albums, dude? Um, other than uh, Lost Exorcista and uh, uh, Astro Creep 2000, are there any other albums that I should be looking for? Uh, there's other records, but they're, uh, they're, you know, I don't even think they're on CD. Mm-hmm. We put them out. Uh, it doesn't matter what they're on. I want to find, you know. They're on vinyl somewhere, but not available. I mean, maybe in a used record store in the cutout bin somewhere, but they're not uh, oh, available. Yeah, um, do you have any of the album names though? Like "Make Them Die Slowly" was one record. That was really the only a full. Oh no, no, no. Uh, "Soul Crusher" was another album, but uh, that's about it. Then there's some singles and things floating around, but they're all pretty hard to find. I mean, maybe someday I'll reissue them. But can you get on the internet and find something? I'm sure there's bootlegs all all over the place. But, yeah, uh, I, ch- I checked uh, your website out. I think they only had uh, one of the singles on there, and then "Sinister Urge." Yeah, my website's a mess. Do you... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Don't go there for any information. The same guy who designed his home theater, actually, <laughs> uh, put it together. Uh, hey, Jared. Yeah. Well, you, you've heard the stuff, right? Uh-huh. Where did you hear it? Was this on the radio? or? Well, one, one, of, my, uh, one of my friends, you know, uh, knew the type of music I listened to, you know, and uh, recommended Rob. And, uh, and, you know, I bought the first CD. Uh, the first CD I bought was Hellbilly Deluxe, and I've just loved this stuff since then. And then uh, later in about high school, you know, um, I found out uh, about his previous band, White Zombie. And that stuff's just marvelous, too. Well, it, and you're, uh, you're living in Van Nuys? Yeah. you got to get out of there. <laughs> you gotta it's get all right. Out. No, no, it's not all right. got to get out of that Van Nuys. <laughs> it's a horrible... Where do you live in Van Nuys? Um, I live right off the 405. No. All right. That's a little more... Oh, no, 405 and what, what exit? 
Um, Sherman Way. No! Sherman Way. Yeah, you got to get out of there. Yeah, it's kind of scary every once in a yeah, while. Yeah, yeah, get out of there. <laughs> They call it Sherman Way because it's like when uh, Sherman w- marched through Atlanta. Atlanta yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's marginally worse than that. So you've got to get Scorched out of there. Earth. <laughs> that's that's what's left. All the livestock has been killed. The women have been raped, and they burnt everything to the ground. Harris. Yeah. You're 14. What's up? Um, uh, uh, I was wondering what the average 14 year old penis length was. Yeah. No, I'm about nine. Nine and a half, probably. Lots of variability. Yeah, I mean, flaccid. You talking about erect? Or f- <laughs> yeah. Uh, erect, like that, 13? 13? Holy, holy crap. No, Harris. Uh, not all of them are 13. There's some 11s. Lots of variability, Harris. Some guys are into puberty, been there for three years, some are not there yet, and there's tremendous range. It's not, there's sort of no normal. I mean, I, I had friends when I was in the ninth grade who were like 14, and then other guys that were like 10 and a half, you know? <laughs> And we made fun of those guys, but it's cool. They grew. <laughs> or what are you at, Harris? Uh, I'm really embarrassed now. Five and a half. Oh, <laughs> oh man! Well, that's that's flaccid. But what about when you when you get erect? That's what I mean. Oh man! Oh, Jesus God! <laughs> oh, I'm wow! Hey, no, I'm Harris, sorry. You're way, laughing, you're, you're, you're way ahead of the curve. You're kidding. Fine. You're fine, Harris. You're fine. Oh, you're <laughs> way ahead. You're a gunshot. You're, you're way ahead. You're being serious, though, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, now I'm you're, really No, you're fine. Hey, Harris, you're fi- five and a half, fine. Fine at 14. Yeah, fine. better than fine. Yeah. Uh, ab- above average. The okay. average is at under six, so they say. Yeah. All right? I, I, in, a, in a 21-year-old. I also have another question, too. All righty. Uh, my mom, recently, when I was on the computer... She caught me looking at porn, and now she never trusts me. Well, she shouldn't, because if she looks the other way for two seconds, guess what you'd be doing? <laughs> you ought to be ashamed of yourself! So, what do you want us to do? Well, like... Get him some porn. Did you have that happen to you before, and like, how long... Did it take when, when listen, when, I, when Drew this when, call or when, when Drew was fourteen, he had to look at star constellations to try to find stuff that looked like it was the shape of a penis. Actually, or actually something. they had these little pictures from Paris that you could. Look That's at. right. That was a big deal. I swear to Christ, if I got some nudie playing cards, it was a good day. <laughs> oh, fourteen. Oh, those pens. Oh, the <laughs> pen, the pen that you flipped over, where the bikini came off the chick when you. Yeah, I remember every once in a while, some kid would find like some porno mag out in the woods that had been right. rained on for like a year, and you'd be like, you'd put it in a shrine. Yeah, you like, salvaged one picture out of it. Oh yeah, I used to go to the this, big this five. Smell of mildew becomes arousing. <laughs> I had a, I had a uh, raft box that I used to look at, and a chick with <laughs> a bikini <laughs> floating on a raft. The bo- it was the box that the raft came into that was pornography. Yeah. Those, are, those were lean times. Go on the web. Can you imagine yeah. that? And then came HBO. Oh, I mean, could you... It's just everybody... I mean, we're all basically the same age here. <laughs> Close your eyes and just picture being 13 or 14 and hopping on the web. And that... That just crazy <laughs> Pandora's box. Would you, would you be able to go to school? Sexuality. No. No, I would have killed myself. <laughs> pull my penis off and hemorrhage. Just <laughs> found <laughs> pull a pull of blood. Mouse in his left hand, penis in his right. <laughs> Here uh, I am. <laughs> it's it's not going to be an open casket. I'll tell you that. <laughs> oh man, hey, Drew, what are you going to do? Uh. Your your kids uh, work those that computer like uh, some sort of uh, uh, Japanese tech. <laughs> yes. Yeah. What the hell are you going to do when those sons of yours hit fourteen? I uh, e- e- I don't know. It either going to put some probably some sort of Tell electronic barrier, some sites. For but on the other hand, on the other hand, yeah, uh, you know, it's I don't know. You maybe can't it's, stop them though. I mean, they're, but maybe they're, it's, they'll maybe know it's not more than you. I don't know that it's a bad thing. This is well, what about it? What about twelve, eleven, or twelve? Yeah, no, then we're gonna. They're not. They're gonna be v- watched when they're on the computer. What are you, you just gonna have like a uh, security guy just stand like just some guy named Ernie just stand by that guy with a handlebar <laughs> mustache, three hundred pound bald, black guy bald. just stand there with the pepper yeah, spray, absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Because uh, you're not going to be able to stop them. They're going to be smarter than you with the computer. They'll get on it at school. See, I, I remember once we had a discussion about this, and I was saying, look, I do not have pornography in my house, which I do not. But I realized that we have DSL, and we've got the DirecTV DSL, and things faster than hell, and it's great. And guess what? Now they can... You get they nothing can, but in pornography In a few seconds, they can pop that in and get it up. and Yeah. 
That's it. Get it out. But I mean, right. get the, the, the get images the out and get the website. Seconds, and I, I don't know what the hell I, I'm uh, about that. I, when I used to babysit, it was always the first time I babysat, I would turn the house over <laughs> look like it was a Bin Laden's cave. I would go through that house, I, tearing open furniture, you know, with a knife, <laughs> pulling pictures off and flipping them over. I mean, I it would always start in the bathroom underneath the sink. That's the number one place, uh, Playboys. It, it was and a then, Playboy. And then the, then the, parent, the parent's chest. Yeah, the parents, yeah, getting into that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and the closets up. Uh, Drew, you got nothing in your house for the babysitter to spank it to, at least zero. You should throw a bone to the babysitter, uh, at least zero. I would want another five bucks an hour if there was no porn in the house. Nine, zero. Now that's my policy with babysitting: no pornography. <laughs> it's going to cost you. I make uh, no bones right up front. And I actually wonder if if exposing kids to this kind of explicitly arousing material screws with them a little bit in terms of what their expectation of like, sexuality like, is. Like weird stump stuff and guys. No, it's more that more that you know you wonder you, just like think what you were exposed to at thirteen. That became that became the goal. You know that became right, right. That became a woman, right? right? That, that's the benchmark. That yeah. became a woman. That's true, it. True, true. And I wonder if you now are dialing in all kinds of other stuff and getting exposed to tremendously. Or, you know, arousing explicit material. All right, so, okay, interesting point. So what you're saying is the stuff we were looking at, it's sort of like the music you listen to in high school or junior high. That stuff gets burned in your psyche. Right. And you always have a certain nostalgic yeah. place <clears throat> Yeah, for I think it. that's true because somewhere in my mind, it's all still frozen in some sort of, like, Swedish ski lodge. Right. Like, everyone's in big white sweaters and stuff <laughs> vibe. But right, it, it, it became it, like late. that's that's where you want to go. Yeah. That's arousal. Like that's somehow there's the a fireplace and skis and yeah. right, hot yeah. tub. They're in the chalet. <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> and it, you turn like nine pages before the sweater comes <laughs> off. It's like shots of them sitting around drinking cocoa and stuff before you even get to see one boob. But it is true that if you do ever spot any of that <laughs> now, it, it, it speaks to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's those you, crazy you, you, sunglasses with the white <laughs> and, the, and the mirror. <laughs> Your kids are screwed. <laughs> All right, uh, Daniel. Yeah, hey, Mr. Crowley, the man, you are hilarious. Well, thanks, Daniel. Doctor Drew, you're pretty cool too. Hey, say hi to Rob's son. You're right too, Mr. Rob. Yeah, you're you're the man. Yeah, you're fine, Rob. Yeah, yeah all right. All right. All right here <laughs> hey, here's my question. It's for um Adam. Okay. Um, you do you remember an episode you did on the Man Show? You uh, yeah. went to Snoop Dogg's house. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, That's I'm my main man. Name. He's never been the <laughs> same. Right. He has never been the same. Right? <laughs> did you uh, actually smoke? Yeah, got baked. Wait, are you serious? Absolutely. Couldn't you did, tell? Did Snoop Dogg? Did he smoke? Oh, oh, please. Snoop Dogg <laughs> smoke. <laughs> Does he breathe? Snoop Dogg was smoking weed from the second we showed up at his house to the uh, second we left. And I'm, I'm sure if we'd come back an hour later, he still would have been smoking. He just rolling spleef all all day long. And we were trying to shoot this bit at his house that was basically Snoop and had a lot of weed jokes in it. And at a certain point, we just said, look, we should just get stoned, too, to really make the bit authentic. But... Jimmy's a real lightweight, and I, I, and Snoop's got some righteous herb, and I lost it. And I just started laughing and eating. I just laughed and ate the whole rest of the <laughs> thing. Jimmy started wandering around like a lunatic. J J Jimmy brought Snoop a big basket of muffins, and he said, "My bitch baked you these," and he handed it to him at the beginning, and then Jimmy proceeded to finish off the entire basket of muffins and about fourteen pieces of Kentucky Fried Chicken, and he went, he went insane. Who's still oh, eating? Yeah. A, a, I thought that was all show, though. But no, I, I, we, I don't even really remember it that much. But uh, Snoop, <laughs> Snoop smokes a lot of weed. But but here's the important message: you kids shouldn't smoke marijuana. <laughs> That's only for comedians. Well, wait, I got a um, question for Drew though about that weed. Mm. Um, does marijuana? Do they have proof that it like does permanent brain damage? They have some evidence that under the age of sixteen, that it can. Uh, change the the structure of a part of your brain that you actually are using to negotiate development the right frontal lobe now how much you have to smoke to get that is sort of unclear I'm and, I, and i'm of the opinion that if you stop smoking that stuff comes back so i'm i'm not seeing any permanent brain damage from marijuana the problem is that it causes depression and it does affect your ability to negotiate development and, you know, so it has some real serious consequences associated with it. But it's more that if you get... People who smoke a lot of weed get baked every day. 
<laughs> and so you sort of eh, you get you get frozen a little bit. Right, it stops your development. You start getting baked every day at fifteen, and then you're twenty five, and that's ten years you got baked <clears throat> every day, and you you lost a little piece of that. You'll walk into record stores and wonder what the hell happened. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's CDs right. In there. But, I mean, it's no different than if you got up every morning and had uh, had a couple shots of Jaeger and a few beers. I mean... Also bad. It would, would be bad yeah. if you did it every day. Right. So, Daniel? Yeah. How there much you weed are you smoking? Uh... <laughs> Just like twice a week. I, mean, I, I, I don't get the ad addict thing from you. No, I don't get that from yeah, you either. Yeah, you're, you're either controlling it or whatever, but uh, yeah, no. just be careful. Just be careful. You're not an idiot. All right. It's not but about just being an idiot. Take, take, take it easy, because I, I, I do, I got friends that have been smoking now for like 15, 20 years, and they're, it's, uh, they're having trouble getting off it. Hey, and Adam? And have trouble getting on with life. Right. It's yes. awesome. Yeah. But you yes. remember me. I'm going to see you in Hollywood. All right? All right. You remember? Where? Where? I don't know. You'd be in my, one of my movies or something. Oh, oh, I see. Oh, in Hollywood. Yeah, Hollywood. <laughs> All right. All right, I'll be waiting. All right. In the movie. Uh, hold on. Let me call my agent. All right. Hey, this uh, six-year-old stoner is going to... Uh, <laughs> one day he's going to make good and put me in one of his movies. What do you say? <laughs> now, we may have to wait 15 or 20 years, but don't worry. I think I can do... I can, I can keep afloat with the radio show. All right. Let's talk to <laughs> Charles. <laughs> <laughs> I actually feel sorry when people say that because how many hundreds of people or thousands say that kind of thing? Remember me? Or? Yeah, then I think, oh, geez. Oh. Yeah. Maybe. All right, Charles. I don't yeah. burst a kid's bubble. You're going to bum as high. <laughs> you're harsh on him. Charles, you're 20. What's up? Yeah, uh, I got a question for Rob. Here he is. Yes. Uh, yeah, how, what gave you the idea for that extra CD that came with your al new album? What gave me the idea? Uh, someone just mentioned it to me, and we were trying to find a something that we could give away with the first, you know, bunch of people that went out and bought the record. It was like the first hundred and fifty thousand, and you know, that was the best thing we could come up with that we thought people would to go for. You know, just a free CD full of uh, other bands. Well, I've never seen it in any other album, so. I thought it was kind yeah, of... Yeah, I think... I th it was a compilation, like, CD? Of yeah, it was like a compilation. I think there was, like, an Aussie song on it, and a new Slayer. Like, a bunch of different bands and new bands, just... Yeah. That's a good idea. That's a great you idea. know, it's a way to showcase other talent. I think right. so. I yeah. think it must have been done before, because I'm sure we didn't think of the idea, but... Well, like, I've... I've I, I, I just haven't heard of bands putting it out with their CD, but maybe they have. I don't know. I mean, sometimes people, you know, you could give, like, a free poster or a T-shirt or something, but, you know... Yeah. We, yeah. we figured this would be something different. You like the CD, Charles? Oh, yeah. It, oh, good. It's kick-ass. <laughs> you like both of them? You like the uh, Rob Zombie yeah. one and you like the compilation yeah, one? Yeah, I was surprised when I got it. I was like, whoa. <laughs> this is cool. <laughs> All good. right. Well, that's good. I always wondered if anyone got them. I'm always afraid that, you know. Yeah, like. <laughs> that never happens. <laughs> that never actually gone. happens. That, Great, know, Rob. We'll get right I, on that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Charles. All right. Take care of yourself. We're going to uh, hear ourselves a Rob Zombie song All right. now. All right? Bye. All right. This is uh, off the uh, Sinister Urge CD. Anderson has uh, got that look again. We got it uh, queued up there, Anderson? Yep. This is called Never Gonna Stop. And a good one from Rob, Rob Zombie. The Sinister Urge is the name of the CD. Rob Zombie is our guest tonight. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back with more after this. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Rob Zombie. Oh, you little people. You know nothing. <laughs> Rob Zombie and I were just in here talking about our $30,000 universal remotes and the little people. And have Rob Zombie do this. Yeah. Maga. <laughs> all right. All right. Come on, Anson. Please. Uh, what are we talking about? All right. Love line, everybody. And uh, Christopher Titus will be in here from uh, the Fox show uh, Titus uh, tomorrow night. And uh, Drew's here. Rob's here. Everyone's here. And let's uh, get back to the phones and speak to uh, Joel. Joel? Yeah? You're 14. What's up? Yeah. Um, when I masturbate, I come really quickly. Good times. That's uh, <laughs> there we go. It's a time saver. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I am a virgin. Mm -hmm. Oh, shocked. Oh, shocked. <laughs> and I don't know if it makes any difference or not, but I've been masturbating since, like, as long as I can remember. Like, since I was, like, four. Really? Yeah. But nothing, nothing came out at four, right? Yeah, of course not. Well, that's, right. that's diddling. Yeah, but, but still, I would, uh, I would orgasm. Really? 
Yeah. You get the, like, how do you, you mean, get that sort of sensation? Yeah, like, I, w- I would wake up really early in the morning, go downstairs to watch TV, and I'd just kind of fiddle with it until I had an orgasm. Huh. Interesting. I didn't know what it was or anything. All right. So, um, you're doing all right now, right? Yeah. Uh, how many times a day can we put you down for? <laughs> uh, one or two. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right, good times there, Joel. Yeah. You keep the good work. Good times. <laughs> all right. Okay. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Uh, you're fine. All right. You'll be getting laid. Uh, I just checked my calendar at uh, 2014. Okay, and uh, Rob Zombie? Yes. Um, your brother, Spider? Spider? Mm-hmm. Uh, he said he was coming out with a new album on, like, the 28th of, like, uh, September or something, or earlier, and it it isn't out yet. What's up with that? Uh, I'm not sure when that's coming out. They're still working on it. Oh, okay. I don't know. All right. But All right. Is he, is they're he, is, working on is it. He, is he is he spider scared of you? Like you got that little brother, uh, big brother thing going? Because uh, he could put a little heat on him. Probably get the record <laughs> released. Let's give him, give him a little uh, little ass woman. <coughs> Let's talk to uh, Tom, who's 28. Tom. Hey, how's it going? Good. Drew. Or this is Adam. Yeah. Adam, the Mr. Man show guy. Right. What's up, Tom? How's it going, Adam? Good. And Drew. <laughs> Good. And Rob? Mm-hmm. And Rob, of course. Rob. <sighs> and every, you know, people call the show like they're asking a chick out to the prom. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, just, uh, yeah, just mm-hmm. call and ask your question. We're fine. Okay. Well, my, quest- my question is, uh, I'm dating this uh, mom who has a six-month-old baby girl. Mm-hmm. And she's 20 years old. Right. And uh, she's just kind of been acting kind of strange because she says that she's been in an abusive relationship. She left somewhere in Ohio and uh, came out here to Utah. Right. Because her mom told her to leave that relationship. She was babysitting three boys plus her baby, and the guy wasn't doing taking Ooh. the babies. Hold on, Tom. You, you can't use the S word. Or the F word. Let's be clear with him. All right. All right. I think Anderson uh, put him on hold. No, I got to hear him. Yeah, get him back, on. Anderson. Come on. Hello. Um, yeah. I'm don't, here. Don't swear, please. I'm sorry. Okay. Unacceptable. The guy was being a jerk, okay? Right. Jerk's a good word, right? Sure. Okay. Well, he was just being a jerk. We'll just leave it up to imaginary listeners to go. You are an asshole. Tom, Tom, that all the uh, subtext that's going on in your mind... Yeah, leave it there. Keep it there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I'm wondering how how do I how do I fix the uh, a woman that's kind of been abused? You can't fix her. That's your question. Well, my question is how. I mean, I'm dating her right now, and she's just kind of yeah. taking it really fast with me, and it's like I don't know what I should do. I mean, Tom, um, she she is a chaotic person who comes from a chaotic environment. And you will get caught up in the eye of that chaos. I'm trying to help her look like a lady because she's, you know, she's not really, you know, she's not like the Pamela Anderson model type girl. But she, she will do, you know. I mean, I'm, I, I don't know. If what, she, what does she look like? What does she look like? What? She's got forty double Ds. No way. Five four. No way. This is bogus. Uh, she's two hundred ten. I'm not bogusing you. She's. 210? 210 pounds. Well, but 5'4", that's about right. She's 210 pounds. She just got done having a baby. Hey, Tom. Yeah. Well, what's up with you, buddy? You're 28? You yeah. Got, you have a job? Yes, I do. What do you do? I drive a beer truck. Beer truck. A beer truck? Yes. That's a good gig, right? A- Adam, you might remember me. Oh, no. I called, <laughs> I called on one time about something about a pillow. Uh, yeah. A, a what? A Pil- pillow? A pillow? Yeah, I was infatuated with pillows. Oh, masturbating with. Pillows. I remember a guy calling about cushions, but not pillows. <laughs> masturbating with pillows. Yeah, all right. Hey, hey Tom. Yeah. Uh, maybe uh, you shouldn't be around young kids. You ever? Well, I don't that? do things like that around babies or young kids. I I see. But are are you drinking some of this stuff that you haul around in your truck? On a- no. No, I don't drink and drive. A CDL is very important. I mean, right. You get pulled over, right? And you're drinking. All you right, know, the, the he'd like to, but right. he knows it's not to. Less. Are Are you drunk now? No, I'm not. Okay, Tom, this girl. Okay, here's your plan. Don't get her pregnant. Okay, well, I've already used the condom. Okay, so. you, but you got to use a different one next time, right? 
Well, I thought Trojan was the best one. I mean, Used, yes, oh I mean, yes. Oh, <laughs> that's oh, the boy. best best brand. But I he mean, means a new, a, actually a, a new condom, not necessarily a different brand. I. Uh, here's oh, what I'm saying, Tom. This girl's chaotic. You cannot fix her. You're going to try to turn her into, uh, you know, pull project. some sort of uh, Pin Pinocchio job on her and turn her into a uh, a, a little girl yeah. or a little boy, whatever the hell Pinocchio turned into. But here's the deal. It's never going to work, but that's fine. Have your kicks with those uh, double Ds, but do not get her pregnant because then you will be locked in. And he said in she a has a six-month-old daughter too, and don't don't be around that girl, the, the the daughter or the child too much, unless you're planning to spend a long time with this woman, like ten years, because it's not fair to that child to be getting these different men in their her life and or his life, right? And then they disappear. But I, very I I understand it, you know, six-month-old. Five four two ten. I mean, it's hard to say no to that. <laughs> I mean, all all she needs is a moped, and that's uh, boy, moped and a mullet. <laughs> a moped and a mullet. That is, uh, you can't say no to that. Yeah, I always, I always wonder what's. Uh, sometimes I always think, uh, what's in it for you? You know, I mean, this guy's not. Uh, you know, it's not Charlie Sheen, but he's 28, he's single, he's got a decent gig, he makes okay coin, I'm sure. What, what's, uh, what's, it, what's up with the project? Robert? Yeah? You're 16? Yeah. What's going on? Well, I was giving my girlfriend a backup, and the parents got all mad, and I just want to know why. Because they probably figured you were either moving towards something more than a back rub or maybe already into something more than a back rub. No, it was just a back rub, though. I understand that's what it was. But yeah, but you, how many back... Oh, the only back rub I've ever given anybody is to try to get some sex off of them. <laughs> so that's the only, only straight guy who's ever given a back rub has wanted sex. No, but we were at a, like, at a public place. We weren't like in a privacy or a home or anything like maybe that. Maybe they're starting to get worried about how much pot you're smoking. <laughs> I don't do that. Yeah. You don't? No. Okay. I believe you. And you, are you a virgin? No, I'm not. You've, have you had sex with her? No. Um, it was another girl. Oh. Okay. Well, do they have any other reason not to like you? <coughs> well, not to like... Oh, this is her parents? No, my parents. This is oh, his this parents. Is, oh, your yeah. parents. <laughs> oh, what are they uptight about? Do they think you're a virgin? Yeah. Oh, they do? Yeah. Are they religious? No. Is it important to them you stay a virgin? I don't. I haven't really talked to him about that. Yeah, it's not good. And you were just giving her a back rub. Like, where were you? We were at a competition thing, and I would give. I give lots of people back rubs that day. <laughs> I can <laughs> say no. <laughs> nobody. Maybe it nobody wasn't that particular back rub that caller. set him off. Nobody paints a visual uh, a visual <laughs> picture like our caller. Yeah. You, you should really. You should really write I mean, short stories. It, about it. it was a poetic, a competition <laughs> thing. <laughs> yes, I close my eyes. I feel like I'm there. <laughs> What do you mean a competition thing? <laughs> you lots of people back for band, for band. Yeah, I see a and band competition. Oh, and you're in the band. Yeah, and she's in the band. No, she's in pageantry. But okay, and what the hell were your parents doing there? Um, it was our tournament. They were working it. Working it. Oh, so they're 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 pretty uptight. I mean, you guys were in your band uniforms. And no, we were we were um, working the at the booth. We weren't in actual. Oniforms. Oh, okay. All right. Like you sound all right. She sounds all right. Just to tell your folks to lighten up. <laughs> okay. I'll try. You sure you're not smoking pot? Are you sure you're not smoking weed? I did it twice. Uh, uh, twice today? No. Those uh, band kids. A year ago. All right. All right. What are you playing, band? Trombone. Oh. You'll get laid for sure with that. <laughs> I love that. I, I, I listen. I miss the trombone. That's the drunken instrument too. That. <laughs> Yeah, so that's nice. I think is that the only instrument that has a position? You know, they go first position, Slide, yeah. third position. I guess, except for like the penny whistle. <laughs> you mean the, the <laughs> slide whistle? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's uh, take a question for Rob, slide. or maybe it's just oh, it's Rob on Rob. Rob, you're 25. What's up? Hey, how's it going, guys? Good. Rob, I just wanted to know: Are you afraid of Mormons, man? Afraid of Mormons, man? Yeah. Uh, well, I shoot. noticed you don't have a date in Salt Lake City, Utah. I think it's Ozzy that's afraid of Mormons, man. Well, I can see Ozzy being afraid, but, you know, I kind of figured you guys should, should maybe hit the show down here at the Delta Center or something here in Salt Lake. We'll be there eventually. Well, we always we sure? played Salt Lake City a million times. All right. I was just scared because, you know, I looked at the preliminary tour dates, didn't see any date here, so... 
just well, think you rock and want to see you down here, man. We'll get down there. Just cool. takes a while to your get music, everywhere. Your music is the best music to have sex to, man. <clears throat> Who's proud of that? that? That works good with Loveline. Thanks, Rob. <laughs> You're welcome. Rob the caller. Take care of yourself. Bye. All right, let's, uh, let's take one more call before we go to break here. Jake? I'm disturbed by that. <laughs> yeah, what <well, no. laughs> is pretty high praise, actually. <laughs> Jake, you're 23. From a 16-year-old. Yeah. yeah. What's up there, Jake? Um, well, I haven't been with a woman in quite some time. I kind of cut off all of my relationships with females. Why? Because I was having fantasy problems, you know, with rape and uh, basically... Fantasy or impulse? I would suppose both. Well, fantasy means you're just sort of playing with it. Impulse means you want to do it. Okay, then it would be impulse. You intend to rape someone. Did you do any of that? No, I haven't yet, but I've been... No, I've been staying away because I don't... You know, I don't want to go there. Well, well, you're scared you're going to rape your partner? Yeah, I'm afraid I might hurt someone. And Really? Wow. Yeah, I have a roommate, and he moved his mom in here about three months ago, and she was walking around the house half naked most of the time. Well, so she, I kind of she was kind of asking for it. I, mean. I kind of confided in her. I told her, I said, "Look, um, I'm having issues with you." No like, way. No, I told her, and she told me that there was some kind of uh, hotline or something that you know you guys could tell me about, maybe. Okay, well, let, let, let's get a little history. And wh- why is this? Why do you think this is a, 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 a an issue in your life? Was were you were you raped? Do you know anyone who was raped? I mean, wh- were was someone violent with you? Where do you think this came from? Um, well, to answer your first question, yes, you were raped. Uh, yeah, I don't remember the first time. Apparently, um, my aunt found out that her husband had been molesting me ever since I was three or four but I do remember when I was eight or nine and I was living with some other people that those guys pretty much well they took advantage of me on a regular basis for the for the two years I was there are you a sexual compulsive do you do you know you masturbate a lot that kind of thing yeah do you have trouble do you are you confused about your sexual identity do you wonder if you're gay or not sometimes? I, I figure I'm bi I mean okay all right well, this is this is something you need treated, okay, Jake. Uh, you should really go. I would suggest you look into people that are used to treating sexual addiction, sexual compulsivity, because they're the ones that have a lot of success with helping people with these kinds of behaviors that come from traumatic sexual histories in childhood. Well, do you, do you have any insurance? Um, yeah, you do. Yeah, but I, I'm told that if you use your insurance to go to something like that, then you can be in danger of being fired because they have a record. No. Well, but you, you don't. they don't need to know what the uh, origin of the problem is. No, that's all kept very confidential. You, you should just find yourself a psychiatrist. I, I, you should also go to an SA meeting. Uh, you call AA locally and ask for a referral to SA. And go to a meeting, get a sponsor, start talking about what's happening. There's a lot of people with your history there. Hey, hey Jake, you, yeah. you never, you've never raped anybody, correct? Correct. Yeah. And, and all right, so that's a good thing. Yeah, the idea is to get treatment before you do hurt someone. That's the idea here. I, I have a second related question. Yeah. There, there's, this, there's this girl. She's been very special to me for a while. And she treats me like, like a god. And the, what my roommate's mom did tell me that since I did seem to be how she put it, moral um, and sincere and trying to, you know, be right that it would be okay for me to d- begin to develop a closer relationship with this girl. And I just want your advice. Do you think it would be a good idea to move forward with her, you know, before I actually call these AA people? No, I think you should get some treatment for, for your own, for your uh, health and for your other people's safety and for your own well-being, you need treatment. You're gonna something's gonna happen with these impulses if you're not dealt with, yeah. and then you're gonna be forced to get treatment or force yeah. some legal action on you. Just open the phone book, call the AA people. They'll give you the SA. It's SA. It's not AA, but AA is just a little easier to find as a Sexaholics Anonymous mm-hmm. or something like that. Find the SA people. Go over there, just go to a meeting, and then they'll point you. That's right. Get a sponsor. In the uh, right direction. Go up to somebody and say, I need a sponsor. 
talk yeah. to that person, work the steps with them, and ask them for good therapy. Uh, but he, here's the deal, everyone who's uh, thinking about uh, committing some sort of crime where there's a victim involved, you will be the victim too, because uh, you'll either have to live with it or you'll be in prison for 14 years, which uh, is not a great thing. You know what I mean? I mean, here's what I want everyone to do. Don't commit a crime for selfish reasons. For, forget about caring about the person you may hurt. You're going to get popped, and your life's going to be miserable. You'll, you'll end up doing time, then you'll get out, and you won't be able to get a decent job, unless it's like uh, in a band or something. So we'll take a little break. Rob Zombie here, and we'll be uh, right back after this. Hey, what's up? This is Marcos. This is Sonny. Whoa. This is Trey. And we're P.O.D., and you're listening to Dr. Drew and Adam Carolla on Love, Love Live. Live. Yes, you is. Rob Zombie's our guest tonight. The Sinister Urge is the name of the CD. It is out as we speak. And let's see if we can uh, cram a couple more calls in. Sebastian? Yeah, what's up, fellas? Hey, you're 21. What's going on? Well, me and my girlfriend, we've been together now for about a year and a half. And uh, we've actually been pretty frisky, you know, throughout the first year or so. But sex life has kind of gotten a little boring over the past four or five months. Now, I bought her for a vibrator for Christmas last year, you know, spice things up. But, it's, you know, still, it's gotten a little uh, a little monotonous. Right. So it's what good. can we do yeah. to spice it up without going into all that crazy whips and chains type of stuff? Uh, I'd say uh, b- b- butt plug. Or, or, <laughs> oh, you don't want to. I'm thinking it's a good thing this chick's not Jewish. You don't celebrate Hanukkah because then it's like, all right. Butt plug on Monday, and then on, on Tuesday, I get you the vibrator. I get the Benoit balls <laughs> on uh, Wednesday. There's still the 12 days of Christmas. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Uh, you want to spice things up, but you yeah. don't want to get weird? No, I mean, you know, I, I'm not really into who's, leather. Who's bored, you or, you or her? Huh? Uh, well, I don't know. She might be open to it, Wait, but I mean, hey. there's a limit. There's hey. a limit to what we want to do. Why can't they hear us when we're talking to them? Nobody hears us. Sebastian, are, are you, uh, are you I bored? I don't know what you said. I just know when you turn oh, at no, me, I should just, say something. Are you? <laughs> Nobody's listening. I kind of toned it down a little bit. I mean, it's, it was a lot more exciting the first year. It's, it's we're, both, we're both, in a sense, we've been doing the same things for God knows how long now, and it's just we're trying to find different ways to spice it up, make things a little. All right. More well, exciting. if she if she's complaining, it's because she isn't into the relationship. How about and, those anal popper things that oh, the please. gay guys use? <laughs> Lick my butt. That's if not a whip. <laughs> if you're having good, a like, problem. No, no. I mean, you know, we we love each other. We oh yeah. No, that's, not that's no. Really, we're really uh, close no, and emotional. No, not if she is not if she's losing interest sexually. No. Uh, okay. Hey, hey, listen, Sebastian. Yeah. This this may sound horrible, but if you don't want to get in whips and chains and uh, butt plugs and stuff like that, <laughs> why don't you just not touch her for like two weeks and then have uh, like some romp and sex? I mean, you want to add a little tension. You want to you want to stir the pot a little bit. That's a long time, man. Okay, let's say, well, what do you guys say 10 about days. Like the, what are, what, like lotions or I, I even heard about like some videos or books out there on all sorts of, you know, new new things. New all right, if you want, if you want, no, no. There, right, get the uh, pop-up Kama Sutra. <laughs> <laughs> all right, just, all right, look, go get one of those videos that chicks put out for chicks about uh, how to stimulate women. Oh, they and, got those? Yeah, they got them. What, just the local porn shop? Yeah. I don't Such know. a waste of time. Oh. Well, I don't know what he wants. <laughs> you see how horrible guys are. <laughs> exactly. They need some ointment. <laughs> yeah. I mean, really, he should be thinking about buying her flowers and being more present, and then she might be open to more different things. That is uh, that that is that is the best inspiration uh, for women. Isn't there just some lotion? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's lotion. <laughs> some lotion. I'd like to see this guy at the. Uh, I'd like to see him like the auto body shop. But the guy goes, yeah, we're gonna have to replace the fender, the quarter panel. Pro- you guys don't have some sort of gel you can rub on the existing quarter panel? Oh. Mm, no. Yeah, it looks like you may have thrown a rod and spun a main bearing. Is there oh, some God. sort of something, some salve you could yeah. rub on the engine? It would also be the same it? guy that would go, I don't think I did that. No, no. no, that's not what's wrong with my engine. <laughs> no, I'm going somewhere else. Yeah, Jason? Hello? What's up? Hey, how's it going? Good. Um, yeah, I wanted to talk to Rob. Um, I've been a fan of you like since I was four years old. I've been like raised on your white zombie stuff and everything. Wow. And I, I know you've probably been asked this question like a million times, but um, I never got to hear why uh, the whole white zombie thing didn't work out. 
I mean, it worked out pretty good. I mean, the band was together for since from '84 till I don't know '97 or something. So I mean, that ran a pretty long time, longer yeah. than most bands. Yeah. Uh, you know, we started in started nowhere and sold millions of records, and then but by the end of it all, we couldn't stand each other. <laughs> so it was big, to basically as simple soul. as it. I don't know. I haven't. You know, I just had a phone call to everybody one day and said, "This is over. Bye." Whoa. That was the last time I talked to anybody. <laughs> wow. <laughs> How long ago was that? Five years? I don't know. Five, I don't know. It was like 80, 97 or something. I forget. That and uh, I just wanted to know one other thing. <laughs> um, if you liked uh, any bands that were like in black metal or death metal. Like who? Like um, Cradle Filth or Cannibal Corpse or something like that. Cradle Filth. You know who they are? Uh, I know who you're talking about, but I don't really listen to that stuff oh. necessarily. I didn't even know there was black metal. Black metal, man. It's evil. All right, all right. Oh, we got to yeah. get into that. It's great. All right, but uh, Jason, you're not going to kill yourself or anything, right? Oh, hell no. All right. All right, he celebrates. <laughs> he celebrates the black death. All right, good times, everybody. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's it's joyous. See. Well, uh, Rob, let me let me ask you: Do you listen to the music that people would expect you to listen to? Probably not. No, Strauss. He <laughs> 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 uses words like in. Oh, maybe I do then. Yeah. Barely Oats. I guess so. Yeah. Well, I mean, I I I think it's pretty common for a lot of performers to listen to just a lot of stuff, and I've, a lot of people will probably be surprised. I mean, the last thing you want to listen to is anything that is even remotely related to what you do. Right. For me, anyway. Right. Right, because you, you get an ass full of that all day. Yeah. Mike? Yeah. You're uh, 32. What's up? Yes, I am. Uh, first of all, I want to say uh, hey to everybody. Um, Rob, I caught you in Tucson at the Mary, ha- Mary Mayhem Halloween show. That was a blast. Oh, that's where Ozzy got hurt. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it is. And, and I did, by the way, hear that it, he slipped in the shower or something. Oh. I don't know if that's true. Uh, yeah, exactly. Here's the um, My question, actually, I got another quick question. I always hear people calling in and trying to, um, uh, <laughs> what's the word? Um, oh, God, I'm lost for words all the time. Stall? <laughs> no, they're trying to, to kiss your ass. You and, you and Dr. Drew, Adam. Right, right. And, and I was wondering, oh, compliment. That's oh, compliment, right. Compliment. <laughs> Thank you. I was wondering, how would you guys compliment yourselves? Oh, if you were a caller. Oh, I, I, I think the, the highest compliment you can pay this show is uh, telling us the question. Yeah, I was just uh, going to just participating, just getting right to it. Yeah, but to, to be truthful, once in a while somebody calls in and said, like, Drew, you love this. Like, someone will say, I, you know, I started listening to the show a few years ago. Right. I was in a pretty bad place. Right. And you helped me with a lot of my That's problems. It. That's the compliment. Anyway, I'm, I'm strung out on speed right now. <laughs> I, I just gave birth to a stillborn kid. And uh, my pimp's uh, banging in the front door. So thanks for your help. Do? Thanks, for, <laughs> thanks for making a difference. Yeah. We'll uh, take a break. Rob Zombie's here. And we'll be back to uh, wrap up after this. Well, that is uh, about it for the uh, show. I want to thank uh, Rob Zombie for coming in here. Always a delight. Yep. Did I say anything <laughs> while I was here? We did a lot of talking. I'm a good listener. Hmm. Yeah. No, I, we had uh, we've had we had some pretty uh, stimulating uh, Car- off air during the commercial. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, right. the, no, don't kid yourself. We've said it many times. <laughs> That's where the show is. It is during the commercial. Well, you guys are listening to commercials for uh, Mountain Dew and condoms. We're we, the, the life is happening in yeah, here. We're really getting down to it. Yep. The Sinister Urge is the name of the CD. Go out and uh, get that if you don't already have it. And until next time. I'm going to be on the uh, Tonight Show tomorrow night for everyone who's uh, listening in a day delay. No, I'll do it tomorrow. So until you've done it how many times, Drew? Zero. That's right. So until (laughs) next time, this is Adam Kroll for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. Well, that's that's flaccid, but what about when you you get erect? That's what I mean. Oh, man. This has been Love Line. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins Engel. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.